Hello and welcome to The Post Workshop. If you are new to this channel, we produce instructional tutorials to help strengthen your film and video post-production skills. To support this channel, please consider subscribing and press the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. In this video, I will show you two approaches to import and optimize source material for Avid Media Composer. We will see that there is a substantial difference in Avid's transcode speed depending on which method you choose. This video picks up from part one, where we learned how to ingest material by linking to it. If you are not familiar with the differences between linking and importing within Avid, I recommend checking out the first video in this playlist before continuing. You can find a link to it right up here. If you are ready to continue with me, then let's look at these two ingest methods within Avid Media Composer. Okay, here we are in Avid Media Composer with a new project opened in the Source Record workspace. Let's start by opening the Source Browser from this 02 camera media bin. Navigate to the material we are interested in working with. I have it saved to my favorites. These clips are MP4 files, and if we look over here, we can see they are using the AVC Longop codec. This codec is highly compressed and optimized for playback, not editing. While you can edit these clips directly, I strongly recommend against that because it will add unnecessary stress to your CPU, which will reduce your system's performance. By transcoding these clips to Avid's DNX HD codec, we can shift most of the workload from your CPU to your media drives. The files will become larger but they will also become much less processor intensive for your computer to break apart and manipulate. In other words, let's optimize this media for editing. As a side note, these clips are full HD, 1080p. If they were 2K or larger, we would use Avid's DNX HR codec instead. HR gives us the same result, but is engineered specifically for high resolution video, hence the HR and HD distinctions. So how do we optimize this material? We have three options. The first is right here in the source browser by selecting the clips we want and using the import options below. Click import and the media will be transcoded to DNX HD and copied to a central storage location. The problem with this method, it's slow, very slow. The transcoding will take many times longer than it otherwise should. I want to share an advanced technique that I use on just about all of my projects. It still optimizes your material, but the transcoding is significantly faster. Sound good? Here's how it's done. First, instead of importing these clips, link to them. Almost instantly, they appear in our bin. But as you can see, these clips are still using the highly compressed AVC Longop codec. Select the clip or clips you would like to transcode, right click, and select Consolidate Transcode. Don't be intimidated by this window. It's actually quite simple once you understand a few key terms. Starting in the upper left, we first need to choose between Consolidate and Transcode. Consolidate moves your media into a central storage location based on the drive selected below. Transcode also copies your material to a central storage location, but also optimizes it for editing. Consolidate is useful when your media is already optimized, or you would like to backup and or archive a project. In this case, we would like to transcode. Here, we can choose to only transcode linked media. Helpful if you need to transcode a large bin or entire sequences that contain both linked and avid native media. We can use the raster dimensions dropdown to create proxy media. That isn't necessary for our purposes, so we can leave this as is. Ideally, your project and source material share the same frame rate. If not, it will be converted with this option selected. 
In most cases, the default target video resolution will be sufficient. But if you are working with footage that was shot with a 10-bit camera, then you will probably want to bump up to 220x, which retains 10-bit color information. Depending on your project's frame rate, the exact bit rate preceding the X might vary, but any DNX HD or HR codec ending in X retains the full 10-bit color depth. At the very end, this MXF is representing the codex wrapper. Assuming your footage was recorded with 8-bit color, you will not increase its quality by transcoding to a 10-bit codec. This will result in larger file sizes without improving image quality. So don't use a 10-bit codec unless you have 10-bit material. For our purposes, the default bitrate of 145 will be sufficient. The rest of these options below can be left at their defaults. As we move down to the transcode button, you might notice that it's grayed out. If this is happening to you, all you need to do is select a destination drive over here to the left. You will also notice that once we do that, Media Composer now tells us how much space this transcode requires and how much space is available on our selected drive. This can be very helpful if you are on the fence about which bitrate to choose. As you can see, the required space updates with your selection. Now everything is set and we are ready to transcode. Media Composer will transcode the material and when it is finished, you will see a new clip, or if you selected more than one, a series of new clips in your bin. The new clips will inherit the name of the original, plus dot new dot incremental number. We can see these new clips are now using the DNX HD 145 codec as we specified. You might also notice a small difference in the icon. The new clip is a straight film strip, while the original is a film strip with two chain links on the right. Chain links indicate this master clip is pointing to linked media, whereas the straight film strip indicates native Avid media that has been optimized for editing. We can locate any of these files on our system by right-clicking and selecting Reveal File. Native Avid media is always stored inside of the Avid Media Files folder. MXF, 1, or other numbers within MXF. This is the central storage location that I referenced earlier. The Avid Media Files folder must be located at the root directory of the drive that you have selected. Back in Avid, we can delete or move the original linked clip into another bin without affecting the new optimized media. The end result of what we have just done is the same as if we imported directly from the source browser but the transcoding time was significantly faster. How much faster? Well, results will vary depending on your computer's hardware and the complexity of the media that you're dealing with, but I was curious, so I ran some tests. Starting at the bottom of this chart, importing material with Media Composer's source browser took a full 96 seconds. This contrasts with transcoding the same material using the same computer running the same version of Media Composer except by way of the link to and then transcode option that I just demonstrated. This method took only 12 seconds, a full eight times faster. With such discrepancies in the results, it got me wondering, would it be best to transcode outside of Avid and then consolidate the media? To answer my question, I transcoded the same material with the same computer, except this time in Adobe Media Encoder 13.1, the current release as of this recording. That transcode took 13 seconds. This restored my confidence in Avid since it's not only holding its own, but slightly outperforming a dedicated encoding application, as long as the link to and then transcode method was used. But why stop there? DaVinci Resolve has become very popular and is not known for holding back on performance. So how does Resolve stack up? 12 seconds, right on par with Avid. Shutter Encoder 12.6 is not able to match the exact DNX HD bitrate of the others, but bringing it as close as I could, it clocked in at 13 seconds. Handbrake, as of this recording, does not support transcoding to DNX HD, so I was not able to compare it. Compressor, Apple's companion application for Final Cut 10, is not available for Windows, so I was not able to test it either. 
Plus, even if I brought in a Mac, the hardware would be different, so it really wouldn't be a fair comparison. I do understand that Compressor now supports MXF output, but I'm not sure if Compressor supports DNX HD and HR codecs. If you know, please share in the comments below. I shared those results with you because while I love editing with Media Composer, I don't support or encourage blind loyalty to any given platform or toolset. But in this case, I am confident that when performing these transcodes in Avid, the link to and transcode method is amongst the fastest of any given workflow that you might choose. Another benefit to this approach is the ability to transcode only a portion of the original clip. In most cases, transcoding DNX HD and HR requires substantially more drive space. In a situation where you only need 10 seconds from an original 45 minute clip would be a great waste of drive space and transcoding time to optimize the entire 45 minutes. I will show you how to do exactly that in our next video. To ensure you don't miss it, please subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you the very best with all of your post-production projects. Mm -hmm.